When the garden's nothing but hills and sprouts with not a single weed, Willie climbs on my back like always. We run and bounce till there's no more breath left inside me. Willie's still squealing, more, more, but I put him down and he starts pulling his ear and whining. So I know it's nap time. Aunt Sarah gives the boys a little bit more, a bit more cornmeal, and this time we have some too. I put the boys to rest on their lumpy rags, and Thomas falls right asleep. But even with my best fanning and sweetest singing, it takes a long while for Willie to settle. By the time he does, Aunt Sarah's got her eyes closed too. I rinse our bowls in the wash bucket to make and make some mud to patch the holes in the wall, what make ghostly sounds when he's trying to sleep. When I finish piling wood for the night's cooking fire, the boys wake. We go outside to play a hiding game, except Willie don't know how to hide, and Thomas cries when I disappear behind the cabin. I take him in my arms and we sit on the ground rocking. Willie rests his head on my back and a sadness, what's heavier in a bucket of rainwater, settles inside me. Who is going to chase away the ghostly winds but blow through cracked walls? Who is going to give horsey rides and play our hiding games? Aunt Sarah calls to us. We cook our corn cakes in the fire, brush off the ashes, and have our supper. My heart feels like it's... going to drop. Mama and Uncle Jim don't come back to the cabin until after dark. The boys are sleeping again, but me and Aunt Sarah have been waiting. Aunt Sarah don't say nothing more about the big house or the missus, but what she don't say hangs heavy between us. Mama takes me in her arms, and before she can say anything, I start crying out the tears. What's been building inside me? Why can't I stay with you forever? I want to stay with you forever. Mama wraps me... Mama wraps her skinny arms round me and rocks back and forth on the dirt floor of our cabin we sway. My sweet baby child, she says, our forever won't start till we get ourselves to heaven. I wonder why the good Lord made heaven so far away. The next day, when the morning horn sounds, I overhear Mama tell Uncle Jim it's my light skin what got me called to the big house. All day while I weed the garden and patch the walls while I chase the boys and pile the wood, Mama's words circle my brain. By the time I brush the ashes off our corn cakes, I got a plan. I need some pondering time, I tell Aunt Sarah, and the boys fall asleep for the night. Grace, stay out of trouble, Aunt Sarah warns you. Mama and Uncle Jim will be home soon. I promise, I say, thinking how happy Mama will be when she sees me. In the light of the moon, I run all the way to the swamp where old George Cooper lives. Old George Cooper used to be a slave, what worked in the fields picking cotton. But one rainy night, he ran away. He never got caught, and now he lives in the swamp with gators, snakes, and soul-stealing witches. Sometimes, late at night, old George Cooper comes visiting. Uncle Jim gives him taters or squash what's growing in our garden. Old George Cooper's got gray tears stuck in the corner of his eyes and silver whiskers blooming through the ripple marks what crossed his face. I used to be scared of old George Cooper, his stories, his raspy voice, his scratches. The ripple marks scared me most, but Mama told me they just scars. Mama says scars is nothing more than a body's memory. Someday, Mama says that good Lord himself will wash him away. Mama says the man what gave him But I don't care nothing about the stories old George Cooper tells. I don't care about gators what bigger and bumpier and sweet gum mark. I don't care about the witch that lives in the swamp that likes to gobble children, especially slave children. I smear mud deep into the skin of my face. I smear mud deep into the skin of my face, arms and legs. My eyes sting, but finally I'm brown, beautiful brown, brown like my mama.
When Mama sees me, she drags me to the wash barn and dumps water on my head. All my beautiful brown disappears in skinny little rivers, what look like tears. Mama scrubs till my skin's pale as a brown bat's belly. Why the good Lord make my skin so light, I cry. Grace, Mama says, this here is the skin the good Lord gave you. You insult the good Lord to try to change it. I'm only nine years old, but I'm old enough to wonder why the good Lord paints children different colors from their mama, making them look stolen, making them feel ashamed of their own skin. Dirt runs into my eye and I holler. Mama hushes me. Grace, try to understand. Master Allen say he own us. We got to do what he want or somebody will get a whipping, maybe even worse. Don't seem fair, I say. Mama's voice grows soft, like when she's telling her nighttime stories about resting in the arms of angels. From their mama. The good Lord's sure weeping at the way his children is being treated, she says, but for now there's nothing we can do. My writiness bubbles inside me. Don't the good Lord make day and night, I ask. Don't the good Lord make the giant trees around the big house? Don't the good Lord make thunder so loud it shake the earth? I forget all about the pain in my eye. Don't the good Lord have more power and Master Allen? Mama spins me round so fast I nearly fall in the mud. The good Lord sure weeping at his, the way his children is being treated, she says, but for now, there's nothing we can do. Oh, oh whoops. That night, Mama makes me sit by my rag bag and repeat all my promises. You have to keep them, she says, because the good Lord and his angels is watching. If you break a promise, they'll know you can't be trusted. Uncle Jim's working outside, and I hear his deep voice singing soft to the heavens. Mama tells Thomas and Willie I'm going to the big house early, early in the morning before anyone wakes. Says folks in the big house need someone strong and brave and smart. Willie toddles over to me, even though he's too young to understand. Thomas crawls after him. Mama said, Thomas crawls after him. I hug them both at the same time, lifting him a little off the ground and kissing their curls like I sometimes do, making soft, gibbery sounds just to hear him laugh. Only this time, all my silly snuffles get stuck inside my throat. And Sarah puts down her men in and leads the boys to the sleeping corner. You's not going far, Grace, she whispers to me. Be brave. Her eyes squint out a warning. Remember what I said. Mama tears a narrow strip of cloth from the hem of her dress and kneels down beside me. She ties the frayed ribbon round my bare ankle. May the good Lord and his angels keep watch over my baby, she says. Then she looks at me with watery eyes. My sweet grace, she says, use tied to my heart forever. I throw my arms around her and make myself a promise to never take her ribbon and to keep my mouth shut.